This is Jim Nix from nomadicpursuits.com and in this video we're going to talk about tone mapping. Now to understand tone mapping we first need to sort of differentiate that from HDR. Many times those two terms are used interchangeably when in reality they are somewhat different. So what is HDR exactly? HDR which stands for high dynamic range it simply means that a photo has more dynamic range in it than any camera can capture in a single shot. So to create a real HDR image, you generally take three or more photos at different exposure values. Typically one frame will be at sort of the center exposure, which would be maybe what you considered a proper exposure, especially if you were just going to take one. And then the rest of the exposures taken in this group, which is known as a set of brackets, the rest are either overexposed or underexposed at a consistent increment. So you might be one stop or two stops apart each time. This lets you capture the details in the brightest highlights and in the darkest or heavily shadowed areas of the photo. And these images are then merged it together to create an HDR image. Now tone mapping, that's the process of converting the tonal values of an image from a high range to a lower one. So you may want to ask, why do we want to reduce the tonal range so much? Well, it's quite simple really. Most standard display devices, such as a monitor that you may be watching this video on, and even printers can only reproduce a low range of dynamic values. The goal of tone mapping is to reproduce the appearance of images having a higher dynamic range so that they display properly on standard display devices. That keeps the image looking realistic. Many times a scene that's being shot has a really high dynamic range. That means part of it's in shadow, another part maybe in highlights, and there's a large contrast or difference between the shadowed area and the highlight area. Now photographers come across a couple of issues that we deal with when capturing these. One is a camera limitation and the other is the display limitation. A camera just simply can't capture full dynamic range of a scene in a sim single exposure. So we end up capturing this bracket set of different exposure levels and we merge them together to make an HDR photo. That helps us overcome that issue. Secondly, the high dynamic range result needs to be reproduced on a lower dynamic range display for viewing. This lets you see the details in both the highlights and shadows, whether it's in print or on a lower dynamic range display. So tone mapping really deals with reproducing the dynamic range that was originally captured so it can be seen and experienced. Now, this is an example of a tone mapped image. This is three exposures. I can show you the exposure information. You just click there and you can see it's negative two, zero, and plus two, three images, and they were shot at F13. They were merged together and tone mapped. When you merge photos in Aurora HDR 2018, they will be tone mapped. And then you come in here and you have your basic or base layer HDR photo. You can then make edits to this. So for example, I might drag the contrast up and maybe HDR enhance just to create a, uh, create a little bit more interest and contrast across the photo because generally a base HDR photo will be somewhat flat. That's okay. You have all these amazing tools here in Aurora with which you can make those adjustments. So that's an example of how you can take a three exposure bracket and turn it into a high dynamic range photo. And we also illustrated the difference between HDR and tone mapping itself. And the result is you have an image that represents the entire range of light that's experienced by the human eye more so than you could ever capture in a single exposure with your camera. So hopefully that helps and thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, let us know. And thanks again. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.